Hello, my name is Susan Hafner. We're in the studio with Kendra Rickerby and Megan Jenkins of the Expeditionary School at Black River. We're going to have a conversation about the exciting things happening at the school this year and how we feel things are progressing. So to kick us off, I'd like to first introduce Kendra Rickerby. Welcome, Kendra. Kendra mm -hmm. is our head of school and I'm going to read her bio just so I make sure I get everything. Oh, Kendra, did you come here as a college student? Was that right, to Vermont? I did. I um, actually skied this area with my family as a high school student, and it was my uh, introduction to the culture of Vermont and a big reason why I then chose to attend the University of Vermont as an undergraduate in secondary education. Fantastic. That was many years ago. Many years ago. <laughs> oh, but like yes. <laughs> Kendra is a career educator with over 20 years of experience working in Vermont and Massachusetts public school systems. She holds a certificate of education finance from McCourt School of Public Policy at Georgetown University, impressive, and a PhD in educational leadership from Lesley University. And if you weren't, <laughs> I can't believe you're, she's so busy and you have time to be, you're volunteering, you have a little side hustle, right? Are you a literary coach? I do, um, and it's volunteer work with a group called Ed Vigor. Uh, we meet via Zoom. Um, the, it's a teacher training program in Nigeria, the country, and our team is all across the United States uh, with two members actually who live in Johannesburg, South Africa. That's so exciting. If I pass, I yeah, and also, last but not least, Kendra is an avid alpine skier, is that right? And you volunteer at the Vermont Adaptive Ski and Sports. Yeah. Fantastic. Kendra Rickerby, head of school. I actually happen to work at the school as well. Um, Kendra was kind enough to welcome me to the team last September, and I teach performing arts. So next up, we get to meet Megan Jenkins, who's the vice chair of the board. I'm going to read a little of your bio. Uh, Megan is a graduate of Black River High School. What year did you graduate? Um, 2003. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. She holds an MA in communication and postgraduate ABD in philosophy from the European Graduate School. Where is the European Graduate School? Uh, the school's based out of Sassfe, Switzerland, and they have professors from a multitude of places across the country, like come from NYU or Slovenia, all over, and they sort of go there in the summers. It's a summer intensive program. Amazing. How did you even hear about that? I mean, from some of the people I wanted to study with. That's with fantastic. Them. Excellent. She's also a co-owner of Ludlow Building Company, Jenkins Builders. You have a really extensive background in communications, is that right? And social media and can yeah. you speak a little about that? Um, yeah, so I was the senior content editor for the European Graduate School's website actually for a number of years and then I've been teaching communication and media studies uh, as an adjunct professor at a number of universities over the past 15 years. Wonderful. And this is that kind of personal coaching that you do. Is that also in that world, or, or do you? You're also a mother of three, right? Yeah. Elementary so, school kids. Yeah, I do. I'm currently homeschooling the kids. They all they were enrolled in Mount Holly School last year, and I decided to try homeschooling this year. So I do a lot of work with moms trying to figure out how to budget their time or best educational plans for their kids and managing business and work. Amazing, amazing. I'm so honored to be here with both of you, and you're doing such wonderful work, and I'm excited to be part of this. Let's jump in, talk about the mission statement, what's happening, you know, happening at the school. Uh, Megan, you want to start off with talking about Sure. The so I'm going to go ahead and read the mission statement. Uh, the Expe Expeditionary School of Black River's mission is to educate students to be intellectually curious, resourceful, and confident in themselves for a life of personal fulfillment and civic engagement. And so the thing that I've always been inspired about this school and the vision that's been a part of it from the beginning is this desire to make students who are self-fulfilling learners, who are self-motivated and self-directed. Because I think that's what we need in the future workplace in a world where you know careers aren't going to be exactly lined out and you may be switching careers throughout your life in order to be successful you need to be self-motivated and directed i love it it's so different from how i grew up i actually am very when i come into work every day i wish i was part of that excellent good how do you see it going do you how do you how are you feeling it's going so far with some of the experiences either one of you can comment on that 
seeing the mission played out day to day? Yeah, it's it's really exciting. Um, my as you, as Susan acknowledged, I have a PhD in education leadership, and in that program, I focused on on school change practices for the 21st century and analyzed Vermont's state policy that brought personalized learning and proficiency-based grading um, to be. A big part of that is learner agency, and learner agency is one of the dispositions that the Vermont Agency of Education expects all graduates in Vermont um, show competency in, that they're robust, and that means robust self-directed, self-motivated, that they have the reflective skills to work through tough times. And so each day this year, I've been in awe of the, how different the organizational structure is within the school and how it's just naturally coming to be because we, we aren't designed for the industrial era. We are designing ourselves for the 21st century. And it's super exciting to start the day and hear kids say, okay, what are you gonna do for the first hour? Well, I really think I need to work on X, Y, and Z. No, would it be okay if I start with A, B, and C? They're making these choices about how to organize their list to do. And that's really speaks to what Megan was saying is needed in our workforce. That's amazing. And I'm seeing the confidence growing and that's a big, you know, the whole, when you talked about confident in themselves, for a life of personal fulfillment and civic engagement. I'm seeing a change from September to now. And as a performing arts teacher, we work on that. And there's people, uh, students coming up to me with an idea that I never would have thought they would have had even six months ago yeah. with that kind of self, I, I can do this kind of attitude. Absolutely. Fantastic. Great. Well, let's move on. How, what do we see for the five-year vision? Kendra, can you speak a little about both the program of studies, but also where you see where you want the school to head in the next few years? Yeah, thank you. Um, we really have an opportunity here that has grown out of the commitment of our school committee, which is remarkable. It's a, a, a group of community members who's determined to keep a school situated in the heart of Ludlow. So in five years, because we have this opportunity to build out what Vermont Agency of Education and our state policy has said is possible and do it with a fresh slate, you know, a, a totally new beginning of dreams and vision, we want to create a school that is a hub for workforce development, that attracts families who are moving here, who might move here, to stay because they have a truly learner-centered, family-focused school culture where they can ebb and flow with their own work needs and know that their kids are safe and happy and exploring. So in five years, we will need to have more corporate partnerships where we build out some apprenticeship programs for 11th and 12th grade. Our program of studies articulates that hospitality and resort management information technology and food and agriculture systems are the three pathways that we would like to start building that out in 11th and 12th grade but of course we're open to other opportunities because as i've said we really do have a chance to redesign schools to meet the needs of the community wonderful and there's so many different facets to this i know selfishly <laughs> as a performing arts teacher i think we we work on skills that feed into that workforce development in any field that they choose to go to are there other things like can you speak to vins and some of the science um, sure. some of that kind of sure and, and also though our partnership with the vermont institute of natural sciences speaks also to how we became so fortunate to have you susan come on board because COVID affected many industries and put their foot traffic and their attendance on pause, making it harder for those organizations or individuals like yourself to have the paycheck. And so with Vermont Institute of Natural Sciences, we are able to pay them to provide and supplemental instruction for our environmental science mission. And every Wednesday, a VINS instructor comes to our campus. We've made two field trips to their program in Queechee. Going forward, thinking about that five-year vision, is we have an opportunity to invest in those community partnerships and let those community partnerships be our instructors um, so that we're not 
solely dependent on individuals who come into the classroom to teach. That's important, mm -hmm. but VINS creates gives kids a chance to strike the balance with the natural world. As you'll see in our program of studies, we participated in a chickadee station pilot where there were bird seeds on the kids' heads and their eyes just lit up. And that's really what we look for is that to strike the balance, you know, get outside, enjoy the fresh air, appreciate our natural environment that we have here anywhere, um, but also pr learn the skills, the technological skills and the academic knowledge needed to, to be resilient in this change. Oh, resilience, that's a huge thing. Do you find that to be a, a big deal right now? We all need to be resilient because things have changed in your own business. And this is a little off topic, but that's such a thing. If I had yeah. had that training as a young person. I think that that's a really cool thing that our school can really focus on values. And while I know public school has a lot of ideals of going there, it's harder to implement some of these ideas about personal fulfillment, resiliency, which is so important. I mean, you can get an education and get A's from you know a traditional high school, but you might not really know how to go out into the world and then organize your own day, make your own schedule. Like these are the skills that you actually need to be able to succeed post your high school degree. I agree. And there's something we do in theater whenever I'm directing a show and Yes, my career is on pause. And when they called me, when you called me last September, I was so grateful to have a home, to have a place to come to do the work. I was a you know, 30 year career, you know, career professional as an actor, director, and teacher. Whole industry shut down. And so we got, we've been able to, I have a room, you gave me a place to be, which was so wonderful. And the students come in and we don't have to follow a very strict, we can take breaks and have a discussion about Oh, why did that improvisation go that way? Why is this scene going a certain way? Why are we playing a certain action? And we're not stuck in a, we may take, you know, an hour to do something when normally you might only have 15 minutes. And I really appreciate that. But the why behind things, I've been talking a lot with the students about why. Why do you make that choice? And that mm -hmm. spills over to every life to life choices. And I hear from students, uh, quite a bit that they really enjoy not having that fixed bell schedule that they are learning to be self-employed right knowing What has to take focus for 45 minutes if it needs 90? That's what they do We've also provided students with their own workspace and part of that was in response to COVID um, but the personalization the putting up of pictures in in what some would say feels like a cubby, right? But that is the work for world, um, or a, a cubicle, I should say. <laughs> Cubby's more elementary school. Uh, but kids are saying, the students are reporting that that, the autonomy to personalize that workspace means a lot. That it's, it, it feels inclusive, that they feel seen and heard as a result of it. That's wonderful. Real individualized. Great, what other projects are happening? What's happening this summer? Is there a summer? Yeah, so there's, we have four summer camps that we're running, which are really exciting. There's two theater camps, I believe, and two nature camps. Is that correct? And then one nature writing camp. Okay. One nature writing camp yeah. and a kayak building course, too. Oh, that's great. So they're going to be able to, um, they, all the supplies are there. But, the yes, the, yeah, that. the kayak building class um, really aims to build up. We have a commitment to integrated curriculum, and students will come and build this kayak and walk away and keep it forever. We do have scholarships available. It's a three week, Monday through Friday, nine to three. It aims to bring together the engineering skill set, the precision needed to know which part to go, an understanding of the solvents, the glue that's used to keep the pieces. And then at the end of that three weeks, let's test it, let's see if it floats and we'll be going to Lake Echo. Um, to paddle the kayak that these students build with their own hands over that. We have um, engaged a seasoned professional in that field from New Hampshire, who's been the former director of career and technical education, has done a lot of work in, in New Hampshire. So he's extremely versed in the kayak building and the proficiencies that will come from that, the evidence of learning that move those kids towards proficiency in different standards and that will be a part of the experience as well as a learner profile 
you've accomplished building this kayak, that means you've met these academic standards. Amazing. And what about your course, the nature writing course? <laughs> not, I want to take that. <laughs> um, you know, I feel very fortunate to have gone to the Bredlow School of English, which is part of Middlebury College, and they there I was first introduced to nature writing and actually spent a summer with some of the writers from the Orion Institute. So for me, this course that we're offering this summer is just a love of the outdoors, a love of writing and conversing and collaboration. It's from 9 to 12, Monday through Friday in July. We will start each day with a poem from a beautifully illustrated book called The Song of Seasons mm -hmm. by Fiona Waters. And from that, just walk and write and talk. Pen, I love soul, pencil and paper, no electronics. Let's just enjoy the fresh air, take a deep breath, and, and just explore what we have here right in proximity of our campus. Amazing. That's wonderful. Yeah, there's a quite, you're in nature very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have this love, love. gorgeous natural classroom and trails out back, which is where Vins goes each week. Uh, Susan, you could talk a little bit oh, about yeah, we, we, had a, a we, we had a cookout. And for the first time in my life, we made um, grilled cheese. <laughs> I've never um, cooked grilled cheese over the grill, and not, I'll do it again. The butter was just dripping, dripping, <laughs> dripping. And we did science experiments into the. We were very safe, um, but Michelle led us in some science experiments to see if. Um, uh, putting a certain substance in the bonfire turns it different colors. We had s'mores. Uh, another time I took my acting class up to that same area. That's where the idea behind the bonfire came because we were telling, we were doing what I call a personal story project. And each student would share a minute or something about something in their life. It did no rules, just talk. And by being in nature in that circle mm. at the bonfire, it just was magical. So then we actually did, and then we played hide and seek at the bonfire, <laughs> and uh, we burnt our marshmallows, and yeah, it was great. It was great. Well, and, and a few weeks ago, prior to that, uh, our instructor Michelle from Vins led students out back, and they put a bag in the river that caught sediment over a few weeks and they did this back when there was more snow and so as the snow melted each week they went back to see how much that mesh bag caught and so then back in the classroom we had a conversation about the condensation and why is that at the bottom where we're more populated and there's more industry the higher we go up the mountain mm -hmm. the cleaner the water and that just grew this cover this dialogue about which cities have polluted water and why and why not and are they environmentally conscientious of, of the surface and then it brought kids to ask questions about covid and how that spread and i i really feel fortunate that at this point in my career that integrated curriculum the expeditionary philosophy is allowing kids to look at a variety of aspects of the world they live in history from too. from one moment yeah one project right yeah. and then all these ideas just grew yes and this reminds me of the chains of the <laughs> the uh the history project and the yeah. reading piece i mean yeah. there's so much happening yeah with yeah. forge and just yeah. the, just it's amazing the dialogue that is happening at the school yeah and to clarify we are reading a trilogy by laurie hall sanderson it's the seeds of america trilogy and it's the story of the the revolutionary war told from the perspective of slaves and um, it teaches history um, next year our hope is to have a, a priority focus be on citizenship and what u.s citizenship means and what it means to pass the test who who needs to pass the test and why and and teaching the history from from that lens um, the the trilogy is serving as our English language arts and our history class mm -hmm. all in one. Um, but we do then link that and we're using Newzella to link it to con the, some current event articles. There are clear connections to uh, lots of current events these past month and it's been interesting to hear kids start to reflect on, on the ways in which the Revolutionary War and Corzon and Isabel's commitment to it 
is now playing out in our Supreme Court with this, this free speech case um, around the First Amendment. So yeah, lots of exciting learning. Um, I'm, as a professional, super jazzed and inspired by these young minds. That's so great. And how did you, were you involved from the beginning? Are you a newer to be vice chair of the board? Or I'm newer or? to be vice chair, but I've been around not exactly from the beginning. I have, was living in D.C. area with my husband. We moved back here about three years ago. Okay. So I joined the board then when I moved back. And yeah, it's been such, it's so wonderful to hear all this, to see some of these dreams that we were working you know, like two years on, I was part of, I guess, to see it coming together is just so amazing. I mean, this is exactly what we dreamed mm -hmm. of to happen. And now, you know, I can't wait to see it further continue, you know, drawing students in from all over the state mm -hmm. and outside and becoming a real highlight of Ludlow. That's like my dream. I want this Ludlow to be known for its school. Oh. That would just be that's what I want. And I think that the whole community needs to really see that this is the future for love. If we want to have a really positive, like, you know, embracing future for this community that's going to really keep families here and grow them, it's through embracing this school. Like, we have such a great opportunity here right now. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And there's a campaign. There's a campaign going. Either one of you want to pipe in for sure. to talk about the campaign? Mm -hmm. So right now we have a funding campaign called uh, Pathways to Possibilities, which is also our school's tagline and relates a lot to our program of studies and the way we, uh, you know, the way we envision education. But we're, we are fundraising. We have a goal of $150,000. We currently have $17,100 raised. And if anyone's interested in supporting the campaign, you could go to blackriveris.org slash fund2021 and you can make a pledge and you don't have to you know pay the full amount right then but you can make a pledge and pay in any way you would want and I think you know that sort of financial support is a real material way to show the investment in the community and as you know any local business or person who's here it's a great way to you know really if you can't volunteer at the school then you know, donate some money to show your support. Or if you are interested in volunteering at the school and getting involved, that's also awesome. Yeah. Well, and we've benefited tremendously this year from the, the gift of time from our math teacher and a world language teacher. You know, we recognize that not everyone has the cash to donate, and that's okay, but we welcome anyone who has a skill and a passion for working with children. and, and a commitment to our, our values to get in touch and let us know what would you like to teach. We're very flexible. Um, that's part of the opportunity of having a a chance to create the schedule. Like as we've been able to say, you have two weeks of time to devote in between jobs. Please come teach us about what makes what you're passionate about. And so it's been a real gift um, to be working with those two educators in the math and world language because it's allowing students to just interact with different adults and broaden their horizons. Yeah, you know, and I want to say one other thing. I think that, you know, as a business owner in our business, it's, you know, it's not the easiest to find employees here. And the work is not the problem. It's finding employees to do all the work. And so, you know, investing money in a school like this that is training people for the workforce and as it grows and we have more older students going to allow more internships is just like a huge bonus for your business really well and thank you for saying that because a key piece to our program of studies is our emphasis on habits of work and the importance of being on time what is proper communication what is follow through it's okay to not have every answer and get it right well, what do you do to figure it out? You know, are you always going to the boss and asking for help, or are you rolling up your sleeves and thinking, hmm, what's the solution? Exactly. And this year, that's been a huge focus of ours, particularly because of the nature of being a startup and doing so in a, during a pandemic. But the habits of work going forward will be central. It's, it's really the fulcrum to everything else that we're teaching um, is the self-discipline, the organizational schools, skills, excuse me. <laughs> um, 
Not in high school, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I, that I knew. Uh, but those organizational skills that are needed yeah. to be able to j- do the job and and to be able to sh- shift gears. You know, mm-hmm. we've we don't want students. We're calling these learning pathways because we want students to know that you can try a little bit of one and that will transfer to another. That there's not a track here. Mm-hmm. And if if a ch- if an individual chooses not to take one of those learning pathways we have opportunities for that as well. Mm -hmm. That's where the flexible pathway and the personalized learning is our key features to how we are organizing um, the structure. Yeah, another thing I also just thought of is just the fact of like, you know, I picture when my kids grow up here and maybe like I want, you know, my son or daughter to work in the business, but they don't want to live here because there's no school or there's not like a real family vibe. This school needs to be here to continue that, to draw in young families and keep them here. Mm. really does. So true. So true. It's all, it's win-win for everyone. Well, and that is where there's so much, I have so much gratitude for not only the school committee, but the parents who have trusted us and had faith this year. They've been key players in bringing us to one month of our first year. We're one month away from having our first year in the books. Um, and there's just been a tremendous amount of support and um, appreciation from parents who want what Megan has just described. Yeah. Oh, and I, I got a gift today, Teachers Appreciation Week. Someone left me a little cilantro plant. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like it's a home. I really do feel like it's a home for multi-generations. It's so exciting to be part of it. Can we? Vi- can people visit if they want to? Is there an open house still? Uh, like a May eleventh? What is it? Of the eleventh? Can you talk about that, Megan? Or sure, sure. So we're doing a virtual open house for now due to COVID and you know all the regulations just to be safe. But anyone's welcome to come. If you go to our website, you could sign up for the newsletter, and then we will email with links for how to sign up for the open house. It's May 11th at 7 p.m. I 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and yeah, and but if students are interested in visiting the school, we can make arrangements for that. And so, you know, emailing Kendra at Kendra at BlackRiverIs.org would be the best way to do that. Yeah, and I'm available for phone calls or meeting outside and giving tours during the school day. We've had a few families reach out for that and schedule that next week as well. Wonderful. Um, and th- that's on an as-needed ba- basis. Great, and then they can also take the summer camps. There's two theater camps, one for um, younger students, uh, make your own superhero. Top by Susan. <laughs> which I'm actually, I'm teaching it, yeah. Uh, a little shout out for that. What and is the age of that again? I think it was seven to 11. I think okay. it's, we don't have to double check the- Seven um, to 11, cool. But um, that's for the youngers, and they actually, I'm working with two schools right now, Cavendish, and um and Wyndham school and we are doing the project uh and it's so much fun (laughs) so i highly recommend that it's a half day camp and then there's a full day camp for three weeks with um teenagers i wish i remembered that i think it's maybe 12 to 17. and that's more of an exploratory scene study and improvisation we're going to create our own show a variety show together Um, And this is just a way, the summer camps are a way to understand sort of the vibe that Mm -hmm. we've already created. And it's so exciting. And anybody's welcome to enroll in those camps. You could be planning a vacation here for just, and have a rental on one of the nearby lakes and choose to take these camps and then September return to a home state. I mean, it's really designed to bring the community together, introduce all people who want to be in this in Okemo Valley region to the opportunities that that our school has to offer going forward. Beautiful, so welcoming, so, so welcoming. I know I first came to Vermont in 1988 and I never wanted to leave and that was the <laughs> feeling, it was in Manchester, Vermont, but it had the same feeling there in Manchester that I'm feeling now with, with both of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anything else? Any burning comments or things you'd like to mention before we say so long? No, just thank you so much for yeah. hosting and oh, for honor. all your work at the school. And you um, too, Kendra. Yes. yes. Thank, oh you. And, thank you. And, and Okemo Valley TV. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Thank you, Today, Caspel Patrick has been a huge help in um, navigating our technological needs this year. And 
we know that that will happen going forward. So yeah, just a great place to be. I love it. Thank you.